Hello, hello again and welcome to another tutorial. And this time I will take and show you how you actually can clean the, your, the lens element in an old Canon FD 50mm 1.8 and it's the bridge lock um, type lens. Not the newer one, this is the older one. There may be some haze in there, so uh, let's see how we can get that to work again. So let's see. <clears throat> so, uh, it, I mean, it looks actually very okay, uh, but if we zoom out a little and see all the tools we need, and then take a uh, small torch and see how if we put some light through it well <clears throat> clean well not really uh, simply too much and if i go around the next lens element or some of the i think it's the third lens element in the middle there is a lot of uh, kind of haze or so and also uh, seeing from the back inside the lenses is pretty much in there but how do we actually go into the lens I mean it's I mean it's not that complicated but just need some tools of course we need some uh, lens spinner this is old compasses which I have filed and grind so it fit perfect for lens working and also camera work uh, we need some screwdrivers, which uh, we actually need the JIS. This is a modified PH00, so it acts as a, um, a JIS00. But uh, maybe one would say, no, it's not possible. Well, it actually works pretty good. Take a needle file and just file off the very pointy tip so it fits perfect in the screw this is what this screwdriver does and we need some uh, flathead screwdrivers <clears throat> this is a two millimeter I cannot remember the brand and a 1.8 millimeter which is their Vera brand German brand very good I think and of course my uh, handy dentist tool and of course a good pointy tweezer we need a blower and we need some lens sucker this is two different kind I mean two, two different types this is uh, from Japan hobby tool really good for bigger lenses and this one is actually a set from with the uh, yeah, different one, two, three, three, eight, uh, seven different uh, tips and different seven different uh, size of the lens sucker head here. It's called from uh, North Sun. Uh, I don't know the uh, the web uh, address, but you can search for it. So. And then we of course need some cleaning. I, I will try to only use the Eclipse for cleaning the lens element. And of course we need some nail polish remover with acetone and just one cotton bud. We also, which is very very handy, we also need some uh, rubber tools uh, which is very handy, especially those rubber cones from Japan Hobby Tool but you can get them on Amazon also the set of uh, nine different um, rubber thingy here which is actually 18 uh, different size of uh, rubbers tools very good for lens work and of course we need some peg pad I like to use that 
under to save, I mean to not use the whole tissue, I simply cut them in four pieces, which is uh, more easy and you actually save some money in that way. So let's go into it. And uh, I will simply begin with the um, with the uh, yeah I think I will get in from the back. I could have going from the front, but let's just start somewhere. You see, there are the the locking ring here for the breeze uh, lock. You need to turn it as much as you can so all three screws one there there and there so it's fully exposed just need to zoom in a little and um, by taking off this part here the whole back remember there is a um, a tiny spring and a steel ball and a long spring in here which will I will show you later but um, yeah we just take off the three screws here and that's just a two millimeter screw screwdriver which is nothing special and it's good with a magnetized screwdriver which is getting things more easy to work with. There was something, of course, I've been into the lens and investigate how it was put together. And um, there was something about the back lens group, which I think, okay, uh, how do I actually go into it? But um, yeah, more about that. See, <clears throat> it's easy. I mean, it's more easy before taking off the mount uh, to push. This this is the the um, the lever where the uh, camera actually push on this to change the aperture. So by pushing it all the way over here into lock position. It will be more easy as you can see the aperture is closed and this lens is I've just set it to 16 which is very good because it will make it easier for you to to uh, take off the mount so remember I should have said it before but set the lens to 16 and then push the uh, this lever from the camera push it all the way over here and it will stay there then it should be uh, quite easy especially if we no just do so set it in infinity the lens and simply draw by holding the aperture ring we do not need that to come off right now but then you can actually just take off this part here so very easy you see uh, we just have a more zoom into that maybe a little too much mm -hmm. now the yeah Let's see oh need a little zoom out more you see <clears throat> the mount is placed like this something like there and when I take it off there are two pins the one pin here which is this pin here and the other is that pin which is wider than the other one now there is also a fork 
Oh, it's difficult to see here. Now there's a fork here, which you can see, and there is a pin down here. And uh, when I push on this one, you can see the aperture is open, close, and opening and close when I push on it. It's uh, the same when I actually turn the aperture ring. You can see the fork in here is actually moving. So when it says, when I set it to 16, which is set on right now, uh, the aperture is fully closed. So when I turn up to 1.4, you can see the fork is also moving. But when I go back, well, it will follow a little. Um, there is nothing wrong with this one, but uh, this is just the construction. Right down here, hopefully you can see it. this pin here is pushing against the cam here, so when I turn this you can see it will move because of the pressure in the I mean the aperture uh, assembly so um, when I push here this pin this is the uh, when it when I release it it will just flip back and uh, it's because there is a spring in the aperture assembly with the blades and this stuff so this is how it looks on the back side so you can see this this pin from the camera I can move it and it will lock into place so quite good one thing don't even think to disassemble the uh, the back here where all you probably see all those ball bearings yeah well you can <laughs> but I do not recommend that you disassemble um, part of the back so away with that now <clears throat> back to the uh, back here there is a tiny pin here as you can see and there is also a tiny spring and it goes down here into this and when I turn the aperture ring you can see it's uh, right now it's down but if I turn it the uh, aperture ring all the way over to 16 look what's happened with the so now it's 5 6 8 11 and 16 and when I go up to automatic this pin will uh, be lifted up because of the of the curved piece of uh, metal in here But we also need to take that off. No need to miss that. So, and then I could actually just take off the aperture ring because it's pretty annoying to work with the aperture ring because uh, it will all the way fall off. Or there is a small steel ball actually right here. I have set a mark here. But the spring and the steel bolt is right here, so it makes the click. And there is also a screw over here. So if I take that screw out, uh, there's no connection from the aperture ring itself into the inner part in here. And it will also make it a lot easier to put the ring on again. I mean the aperture ring on. 
there is a bloody spring in here <laughs> which is if you uh, lift up the aperture ring here and on this side the spring will be quite difficult to get back to place again so I will uh, just set the aperture to 1.4 and then take out the little spring well it will make it easy but when I will put it on again I will put it all the way over to 16 no actually the green dot so um, and it's therefore I set a mark here which you probably can see there's one there and over here it's the um, steel ball and the and the small spring for the aperture click now <clears throat> um, I will just set it as automatic they will say the green and on mount unscrew this uh, tiny screw and then there is no connection to the aperture system so all for that so and now then I can just turn the ring all the way, the way over to 1.4 or even the 50 millimeter because then there's no spring I mean there's no tension in the very long spring around here and since the uh, steel ball and spring is here just lift it up here just keep an hand on here on this side so you can uh, I mean it should be possible to lift up you will never miss the click of the steel bone so it's actually here it was a bit more over than I remember so the mark was set here but it should actually be here but we could just put the mark here so it will be easier to fix so now I know where the click is and there you see the very long spring which is here uh, I will just unmount it here and then I can get rid of the the um, this long spring and the aperture ring so and then I can also take out the small steel ball here as you can see put it somewhere where you can find it and of course the little spring is even more tiny <laughs> so so now we are actually safe to uh, to work oh there hmm I didn't actually expect that when I took the lens apart there are two steel balls okay I didn't realize that because I actually didn't take off the oh come on do you mind little <coughs> steel ball okay I didn't uh, expect that there were two but uh, okay somebody learns things every day so come on there hmm yeah okay here we go and uh, then we are ready to enter the um, the back lens group here you see there I had some problem by uh, come into it because it sits really tight so 
I need to put on, of course, this lens here is not that tight, but I will show it anyway. We need the nail polish remover with our stone. And simply dip just a tiny amount on the th side of the thread here. So it will suck into the, the thread here. It could also be over here, it doesn't really matter. But it needed. So, um, and then I can actually use my lens <coughs> spinner. This one is a pretty flat in each end. And uh, then I can uh, unscrew it. <clears throat> and then I will use my uh, rubber tools here. Doesn't really matter what kind of tool it is. <clears throat> Maybe I should use this one instead. This one is uh, 35.54 millimeter. And then I can just unscrew this. So, and then use my fingers to unscrew it, the rest of it. So, here we are. And <clears throat> just put this aside <clears throat> because we, I need to dig deeper into the lens. And uh, there is another retaining ring in here, which I, of course, also. Uh, need to unscrew and again you will use some nail polish remover and just dip in on each side of the retaining ring so the uh, thread lock I mean there <laughs> Nail polish remover will uh, will soften, and then I can unscrew it with my lens tool. I mean, hopefully, there, so there, and. <clears throat> Need a little adjustment here. And there are the one lens element comes out, and there is another one which uh, yeah, just use the rubber tool to unscrew the rest of it. So. And then it comes off. And now we actually need a, um, a lens sucker which is this one. Just need to clean it a bit. This is a lint roller, which is very good to take off the small hairs and stuff. So I can simply put it on here and lift one lens element. It looks like this. So this is the very bag which sits in a frame. And this is the next one. And uh, I will show you the third one also. How does it actually look? 
if we take it, oh, wow, really dirty, dusty, and it needs some care, as we say. <laughs> so I will just put it in a stand so I know where it is. And the rubber tools is pretty good for those things. And I can just put it here on a stand. So, and now it's safe. I mean, as safe as it can be. And now the, the most, uh, the very back, the inner lens element. And uh, hopefully it can come out by this uh, beaker. So just put it on and hopefully it will pop out. Yeah. And there's also a retaining ring. I mean a spacer, not a retaining ring. <laughs> This uh, lens actually, it was not easy to get out as I thought I could take this lens out from the other side, it will say from here. But uh, it was not possible because it was kind of glued into place. We actually can see there are some something there there and over here oh sorry just zoom out come on remember the direction of the spacer it has to sit like this and the next lens element which is this one sits there So, uh, and it doesn't have to sit like this, it has to sit like this. So you see the inner diameter here, where this lens, lens sit on, is smaller than the diameter here on the other side. So this diameter from this side is bigger just so you know it. Well, how does the inner lens actually look? Well, it's a bit dirty. I mean, there's kind of light haze, but I think it can be much better than it was. So uh, let's see. We do some cleaning here and I think I will do the the inside here first because then I can without any problem do the other side and then just put it back into the lens again so this has a really strong curved but um, it's not a problem So, put it there on the stand and to a more safe work, uh, I'll just put it on a bigger, the other lens uh, rubber tool. And then some cleaning tissue, which is very good to have. And I just cut them in smaller pieces. <coughs> And uh, so it's easy to, easier to work with. And then the Eclipse cleaning fluid. And simply add something here. And uh, so. We do it again. Uh, 
Maybe it's not as good as the uh, lighter fluid, which I use a lot. But this actually turned out to be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> It's more on the on this side than this side, so it looks like it actually a very good um, cleaning. And then I will just take the outside of the lens. Uh, maybe it's better to use this. Yeah, I guess so. <clears throat> or maybe. Better with this one. No. There are many different uh, combinations by using those uh, rubber tools. So just add a little and then move around. So Wow, <laughs> it's just amazing. I mean, how it doesn't matter how many times I clean a lens. I think it's interesting to see how clean and fine they can be. See, this is really good. There's some small hairs. Nothing special. And then I can actually add the, put the lens into place again. And say, wow, that's good. Where is the spacer? Where did it went? Hmm? Oh, it was here. <clears throat> and remember how this ring should sit. The small diameter is towards the front. So this lens I can put on here. So. And I would like to put it in. Without using the uh, okay, this one can be fine. I guess so. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. What to do? What to do? What to do? I could also do this. Put it on the uh, retaining ring itself. <clears throat> so it will be easier to put in, but it's not the same diameter. Hmm. What about this one? It's not good. <clears throat> okay, Houston, we have a problem here. <laughs> I could also just put it in. As we can see right here. And simply <clears throat> turn the lens over. So there it is. Since I didn't have a uh, a rubber tool with a correct diameter, I will just do it in this way. So add this uh, ring, I mean the spacer. And then this lens sits as it should. 
Now the next lens element, which was uh, this one, and you remember it has the very curved uh, towards the back to the very back lens element. <clears throat> And if you put it in wrong, you will damage the lens. Absolutely. So just be sure how the, the lens elements should sit. And now the, uh, the next lens element here, which I will use, uh, I think I can use this one here. Yeah, I think you want to do the inside first and then the, <clears throat> the other side, of course. <laughs> yes. And there's a one side here I can use. So there. It looks pretty good. But I can of course first see the the result when I do the other side. And for that I will see if it's no. That is bigger than the other one. Okay, I will just use this side. Sometimes it's not easy to find the correct diameter of the um, of the lens. I mean the lens rubber tool. I can also use this one. Okay, that would be pretty good. So, just put it here, uh, okay, better so, <clears throat> and where's another one of those, so, and this. So, and out. It's just amazing. And uh, we took some light through it. Well, it's much better. But there is something here on... Or is it just a small... something on so of course I will just do it again I mean always twice so I mean there could be something wrong with the lens of course but uh, That was much better. There's still something going on here. But, I mean, it's much better than it was. So, there. And then I can just add the this lens into the um, into here and just be sure there is no no small 
hairs that comes in <laughs> yeah it happened now and then and I will simply use my my uh, lens sucker here it's just a tiny one it's good to work with small lenses put it on and let it just come in here and here we are I mean that's actually simple kind of it's not rugged silence uh, science <laughs> so um, and then put it aside and I'll just do the very back lens element which looks there there is a lot of dirt and things I'm not quite sure if it's on the very back or the it's also on the back and on the inside here so uh, let's see I'll do the inside first there okay this one fits perfect no perfect here it is and a lens tissue And it's more difficult to get the edge uh, really good because there's well it's difficult to go on the uh, on the edge of the lens get all the things away but let's see how it will go but uh, <clears throat> we could also use a Cutting, but because sometimes it's not easy to to come into the very edge of the frame so by using a um, cotton butt and simply do like this yeah but let's see how it will look when I do the very back if I go got all the stuff away on the very back lens element Sometimes I also use uh, lighter fluid if the eclipse cannot take the, the things away. But maybe it's not necessary here. Hmm. There's still something on the surface, but it's much better. So I will just use some lighter fluid is the extra it could be Ronsonol or Zippo or whatever name they have doesn't really matter And then I will uh, simply use those tiny cotton buds. So let's see how it will go. Just a few drops. That's more than enough.
the thing is with the the lighter fluid that it takes away very good I mean almost uh, all this uh, fat and oil film or so so it works pretty good Oh yeah, so it works. <clears throat> so before <clears throat> it was actually really bad, but right now it is actually fine, if you ask me. <clears throat> of course it's not a new lens, but uh, it works pretty good. So let's just put stuff, I mean, put this lens into the lens again and say that was fine. So, and uh, we need, of course, the retaining ring. Where did it go? It was somewhere. Mm. Here. <clears throat> so the retaining grain goes in here and I just have to catch the thread there. And then I cannot do it more there. <clears throat> this one is too small, so I need my lens spinner here. Compass, what name has? And before I tighten it. <clears throat> Just throw the rest of things away. It looks pretty good. So, <clears throat> that's it. And then the very back lens goes in there's no small hairs or stuff no <clears throat> so that's easy it looks pretty okay there are something small hairs here oh there was one bloody hair there <laughs> inside here oh gosh Not easy sometimes. It was amazing. Okay, there is a solution for almost everything. So now it's time to use some series tool to get rid of those bloody hair. And for this, I will use the eye lead, which is the uh, this green stuff, which is absolutely great to do lens cleaning, 
sensor cleaning and all that stuff so you just if there's hair on simply just do this I mean when Leica use it okay it's uh, I mean it doesn't tell everything but it is a really good tool when um, take away those small hairs and stuff and it you can you can reuse this as many times as you want so to me it's a really good tool so we can just put this lens in again and then it should be much better than it was and then tighten the the back lens group I mean the back lens so and now it's done and now we actually need to go in from the front so there and then I need to take off the front nameplate which uh, just get rid of all the things here um, I need a tool this is this could be this one here to unscrew the nameplate itself it doesn't sit that tight but uh, it's off. In this lens the nameplate was extremely tight in the beginning the first time I go into the lens so I simply add some nail polish remover around I mean when it sits in simply add a lot of nail polish remover and when it comes off I could see what's actually happened because you can see there's a lot of stuff here so I don't know how much they have used but there was I think they have used a lot of thread lock and now we are into the front um, the only thing I do is well I could I, not, I do not need to take off the front here because I can I only need to unscrew the front lens element and uh, it shouldn't be necessary to unscrew the very this uh, the shiny front ring but uh, I'll do it anyway because then we can see what actually happened where is my I need a tool here you see the the ring this uh, front ring has to sit correct so there is a notch here right here it has to sit in line with the index mark here so therefore <clears throat> I make a scratch in here and I also make a scratch here around the C there and over there so I know exactly this ring should sit there and also make a scratch here <clears throat> so therefore I um, unscrew it and it's also much easier to get the uh, of course the front lens group out because then I would like to show you what happened inside the the uh, when take out the aperture I mean when I'm here in the lens I could just show you how it looks so this rings comes off 
remember how it sit because all those three here there there and there it doesn't matter how it sit I mean it can sit like this no it can't because one screw over here doesn't fit and it cannot of course not sit like this because one screw would fit here and there but not there so this ring can only sit one way so there is no need for making any scratch but the uh, since I do not have a repair manual for this lens I would just <coughs> set my reference mark so now I need to take off the front lens group there's a notch here and a notch over there but of course I will try to use a rubber tool and then in this lens the front lens actually doesn't sit with a thread lock so I could just take it out and so but of course there could be so if there was any thread lock in you should just add some nail polish remover around to get it out so all for that and here we have the front lens group there is a retaining ring that holds the very front lens into the into the tube here and there is also a retaining ring on the back here that holds the the back lens element here and the next lens element there are three lens element in this here but I will begin with the uh, the very front which uh, I need to and also here maybe it's too tight so I will just add a little nail polish remover simply add it around here so you can see it, it runs around the thread and it just has to sit maybe 10 minutes or so if it's too tight and then you can um, then you can unscrew it I mean hopefully <laughs> you can unscrew it let's see if this uh, I mean the retaining ring I have unscrewed before but let's see how good it will work right now so and then yeah it's loose and then I <clears throat> and then I can use my uh, rubber tools somewhere where did it go here it's too big my dears hmm okay I can take this is too big I can take this one there are many combinations in that way so the retaining rings comes off so it is <clears throat> and then I can simply just take out the uh, front lens itself just pop it in my hand but it is a bit vacuum so because of the tight fit <clears throat> so I will use my uh, lens solder the bigger one put it on and simply turn it and off it comes So this is how it looks. Put the this aside, and then I have the naked 
front lens itself. How does it actually look when we take a torch, put some light through it? <clears throat> well, it's actually a bit dusty. I mean, a lot. And it's, I guess it's in sight. Yeah, there are some. So we'll just begin with the um, with the outside. <clears throat> so there, and a lens tissue. Where did it go? My tweezer. Hmm. So, <clears throat> and see how it will, will go. So, fine with that. Okay, it looks fine. Then turn it over and do the other side. Maybe it's better to this. Yeah. Fine. And then the clips. That's cleaning. So. Wow. It looks pretty much better. But how good is it? Well, there is still something on, so I will. Um, <clears throat> I will simply just try the the lighter fluid. It simply sometimes works better than the eclipse. I don't know exactly why. So. And then it's there. Yeah, it helps. It's simply much better. And so the inside. <clears throat> and then this lens is fine and clean. So, wow, this is great. And then I will just put it aside on a tissue or something. <clears throat> and then take the uh, the next lens element and the back lens element here. You see, there is also something kind of uh, thread lock on here, as you probably can see. There's something on here, so <clears throat> I need to use uh, nail polish remover again. And simply add something on here so it can suck in and soften the thread lock and hopefully uh, it will lose up loosen up I think it's all for that now a rubber tool not this size where does the other went? Maybe this one. Okay, I need this one here. We just make a rearrangement. And the uh, so you can simply take this one, put it over, 
and it's flexible enough to simply put on here. So, have a good grip and then ah, off it comes. So, the retaining ring and uh, this lens element, how does it actually look before? Okay, there is really a lot of haze as you can see. So it'll be interesting to see how good it will be <coughs> when I'm done with this lens. It has a pretty tight fit. So, and there is another lens element. So an interesting lens actually. And again, I will just uh, do the inside here first. Oh. Uh, where did it go? The one here. Yeah. Okay, I need a better stand there. So, and then I can simply clean this, <coughs> the very back of uh, the of this lens. I think I will just use the lighter fluid. <coughs> it simply does it better. <coughs> wow. <laughs> it's amazing. But how good is it? <coughs> Okay, it was uh, a bit dusty before, but right now it's absolutely amazing clean. I mean, the outside here, yeah, there is also something on. So I would guess it will be a pretty good lens when I'm done. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> so, just do it again. Amazing. That's just amazing. Yeah. That's pretty good <clears throat> in my opinion. Yeah, so I put it somewhere. And then I need the um where did it went? Okay, here. <clears throat> now the middle lens element needs to come out. How do, how dirty is that? Hmm. There is also something on. <clears throat> and then it can just pop in my hand, hopefully. Okay, bloody lens. There is no retaining ring here. So it is it's really, really tight fit. I mean, it's simply amazing how they can make the lens that way. So this is a really, really curvy lens. <laughs> Amazing. And it sits like this. <clears throat> I mean, goes in here. So let's see what we can do about it. I think I will do it that way. Yeah. And 
a lens tissue. Okay, the lens is not that deep as I thought. It helps a lot. <laughs> And then I need this stand there. Just do it again. So Wow, again, it's amazing. It's simply just amazing. Well, there are some small hairs that we could just get rid of. But it's absolutely amazing. Then I can just pop it into the this uh, frame. So and uh, just get rid of those small. Where did it go? Here. Simply put this into place and hopefully there is no small hairs. <laughs> you see it's much clearer than it was. So it's great. But I mean one should not forget it's not a new lens. So And then tighten it with this tool. <coughs> so, and then we are almost done. <coughs> I only need to put in the rear front lens element. And of course there are some hairs on. Well, <clears throat> I think I will just clean this with the uh, lighter fluid to do it a little better than it was. Yeah, it's, it's much better. Okay, little hair. It's a, it's a lovely tool, this uh, eye lead. And then I can just pop this back to my the other front lenses and of course there is something in here and then just put it in so and here we are 
then the retaining ring comes on and then we are actually almost done with the lens cleaning where is my tool here So there it is. I mean, that was actually that, but I would like to show you more of the uh, the aperture. <clears throat> so um, because it's actually very easy to come into. And um, but maybe I should do it in another video. Hmm. No, I will just show you how it it, it is <clears throat> before taking out the whole aperture assembly. We need to do one simple thing, and it is to of course make a scratch here on the on the ring here and on the inside. Of the the lens body just so you know where things should sit before take it apart because I don't think the repair manual will tell you anything about it see um, the fork here on the back has to sit in one way so it's fully closed the aperture has to sit all the way over here so this part here is actually control the aperture so if I move this you see I can open and close so this fork here has to sit all the way over here before unscrew those screws so I can just take my screwdriver and unscrew all four I mean all three screws here the holes are a bit big bigger than the screw because then you can make some adjustment but since I already set a mark it uh, I know exactly where the aperture assembly sits in here. So <clears throat> just let the spring sit where it sits because it will make it easier for you when you put it in. So out with the uh, aperture assembly. Okay, wait, can I take here? So this is how it looks inside. And this is also, <clears throat> before I took the whole lens apart, I simply couldn't figure out to take this tube here around I showed I could I th thought I could unscrew this this whole tube with the lens element but I couldn't so I think okay it will be this uh, thread that need some thread uh, I mean lens polish I mean nail polish remover sorry <laughs> so I could unscrew it but I simply couldn't and uh, okay how to take that out until I uh, figure out, okay, all lenses come out from the back. That's it. Now, see, here is the uh, the aperture connection. That is the one here on the back. Which I it sits here. And um, 
let's see. This is the the whole aperture assembly. There are three screws around, which I will not take off. I mean, when the aperture is fully open. Uh, and of course the spring here is taken off. The uh, the aperture will be full open. And then you can unscrew those three screws and take out the plate. But of course all the plate will fall off. But it's uh, attached to the holes here. And uh, the plate here on the back is only a kind of a lock plate, a cover that uh, prevent the plates from falling around. But this is how it looks. And if there is any oil in the aperture system, it would be the way you should uh, should fix that problem. It's not a problem here, so. Um, but then I will just put it in again and you see this hole here, this notch, I mean the gap here, it will go over the pin there. And the pin itself, this one, will of course go there. So there isn't any problem with that. So just put it in. Where did it go? It has to sit all the way. Okay. This uh, pin here has to sit all the way over to the right. So when putting in in the uh, aperture assembly you simply need to catch this this gap here it shouldn't be a big problem but uh, of course it can be but this one can be moved a little and hopefully or you could move this See, it has uh, cats the pin. So I can just screw in the the three screws, and uh, since I have a mark, it's no problem to get it to correct place, as you can see here. Just tighten it gently. There's no need to over tighten anything. And then the the last screw and we are done. So that's it. And then I can just add my front lens group into here. And let's see if there is any hair there was one there. Go away. But it seems to look pretty good right now. So I can just put it in.
right there. Fine. Where did it go? Here. This. And, uh, yeah. So it's fine. Right now. To uh, to put the uh, back, I mean the mount, okay, <laughs> we of course need to put in the small pins and springs for the aperture, it will say. This one there and a Chinese steel bowl and the other spring goes in here. Okay, little fellow. Okay, pin nice and friendly. So it is there, and it sits where it should. And on with the small steel ball and then the uh, aperture ring with the uh, very very long spring see there it is Hey, do you mind little spring? Hmm. Not easy, but who said it should be that easy? Well, it should be possible to do it anyway. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is not so easy. But I think we'll make it. There we are. Hmm? Is it? I think so. And here we are. So that's it. And then, okay, the the tiny spring. I mean, the tiny steel ball here. Comes out. No, 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 no. Stay there. See, um, when putting on the aperture ring, the spring has not to have any tension because then it will be pretty hard to get it on. So one should put on the aperture ring here. So <clears throat> now then I have to turn the aperture ring itself to get to the correct position where the um, where the hole is for the aperture screw. So I can put it in here and hopefully catch the 
the screw inside the so and there it is so you can see I can move it which is good and then the rest of it is just straight forward I'll just put this front ring on and simply get the get the uh, the mount on the back just in don't forget the uh, the tiny pin here and the spring which sits here and will be very good if you set the the aperture ring to 1.4 before putting in the pin, I mean, before you putting on the mount. So now I can actually do the rest of the assembly, but it will be easier if you put the lens to infinity. It will be easier to catch the this pin here to the fork, and this, which has to sit on this side. Of the of the pin here, if I move this, this one can be moved. So one point four, and then. <coughs> Cuts the the fork, and then I have to turn this ring a little to catch the uh, the small hole here for this pin. Just so you know. There, and then turn it, and hopefully it will. That's a tiny pin. There it is. And also the screws here are just to align to put in. Okay, will you stay there? And then another lens has, has been done to, to work pretty good again. So you see it's not difficult to, uh, to work with the FD, I mean the old FD lens. It's different with the with the uh, newer, which is a more, it is, it's a different construction, as you say. So this one goes in here, and all three screws comes in, and then I only need the nameplate, and then we are done. They're very short. So, and on with the nameplate, and tighten it so it's, I mean, it says click. And then I can just tighten the front nameplate. Okay, this is better, this is better, yeah. So, here we are. 
But how does it look when you put some light through it? Oh, wow! I mean, before it was really dirty and dusty inside, but this is absolutely great. There's still something. And maybe it needs some uh, hydrogen peroxide. But for now, I think it's pretty good. So um, that was actually that for me this time. Hope you can use the content in this video to disassemble your lens. Uh, take care of the glass and take care of the tools so you not get any glass elements damage or scratch. So that's all for me. Bye bye.